do is to go to the first slide, and you can see this clearly give you a sense of what the congressional district looks like since the redistricting. Uh, that redistricting took place about a year and a half ago. And uh, the legislature, as you know, every 10 years redraws the line. So my district, which used to represent uh, Howard County, uh, a good portion of Baltimore County, and not so much of Baltimore City, uh, now represents virtually all of Baltimore City, none of Howard County, and a good section of Baltimore County. So on the Baltimore County side, we pick up Woodlawn, we pick up Ricestown, we pick up everything on that western side, going up Liberty Road and slightly beyond that. And on the east, we have now in our district, uh, Dundalk, Essex, part of Middle River, uh, and some other communities that go down to the shoreline like uh, Fort Howard. So we are abutting the Chesapeake Bay significantly on the east uh, and going further out into the uh, county in the northwest. Um, it is, it's interesting because you know, people need help all over the place. Yeah. And they don't care what district they're in, so I've never really treated the confines of my district as the confines of what I can do. Uh, wherever we can help, that's my belief, we have to help. But having said that, um, many persons who are in those areas just argue over and over again uh, that since they are actual constituents, they should come first. And I, I'm the, the last one to argue against that. There are 772,000 people that live in our congressional district. Our congressional district has more people than Baltimore City. Uh, and it's significant because 772,000 over the years represents the growth. When Karen Mitchell first won this district in 1971, uh, the district had 415,000 people. So to go from 415,000 to 773,000, it just shows you that uh, this is based on population of the United States divided equally by the number 435, which are the number of seats in Congress. That's how we come up with these numbers. It, uh, it just represents a significant increase. So one of the things that um, we try to do and we do with a great deal of pride is to honor constituent outreach requests. Um, since January of this year, it's in your brochure, but you'll see that we've answered 2,350 calls for assistance in the last 10 months. And that's resulted in about $1.4 million back to those constituents who were calling because they weren't getting the social security checks, they weren't getting benefits, and other things. And uh, we recovered an additional 800,000 in retroactive benefits, just to give you an example, from the Social Security Administration and the Department of Veterans Affairs, over a quarter of a million additional dollars. Um, we had one person who was actually awarded $58,000 who was battling cancer and they had their, phone stole, their funds stolen uh, from the thrift account. And so my staff is scattered around and all and elsewhere. I just want you to know that they are more than just staffers. They really, really work hard on a number of constituent cases that are important because I mean, it's just been the hallmark of my service. I believe in that. I, other people believe in other things. A lot of TV commercials. I just want to make sure that we hear everybody that has to be heard. And, you know, we have a success rate of about 88, 90% on a lot of these cases. And so we feel good because we are able to change things. 